Today's video is Dominion. This is the time of turmoil. This is the era of war. This is the age of Sigmar. Except not really, because we're, we're more excited about the Age of the Beast. We are way more excited about the Age of the Beast. <laughs> so we get the, the aggressor dude on the front. Mm -hmm. We got a whole heckin' lion face for his chest. And... <sighs> we get all these beasts. So you ready to open this thing? I'm very ready to open this thing, All yes. right. Our bodies are ready. All right. So... Oh. You ever get that weird farting noise from the box <laughs> yeah. opening when it gets super tight? Yes. <laughs> Don't make any jokes about that. <laughs> of course. Ooh. All right, well. Art piece, super cool as always. It's actually in really good condition, too. Considering, yeah. Yeah. And then, all right. So it looks like they're doing the same thing as always, where uh, they, they've individualized sprues, so... This is gonna be super easy to like Ooh. break apart in groups. These are actually part of this. Yeah. Because those are the uh, hobgoblins, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So we got brand new hobgoblins. Brand new storm cast. All whole uh, bunch of new don't plastics. Don't you mean sick marines? I do mean sick marines. <laughs> it's been like what six years since this came out? We yeah. gotta keep making the same joke. Uh, until the day we die. Um, <laughs> I. Look how dense the sprue is, though. Like, they yeah. really packed a whole bunch of this thing. Like, even this one is fully... Oh, I love these. Yep, same, 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 same. It actually reminds me of the... Um, if you ever get a chance, look at the Paragon War suits. Uh, mm. Mm hmm Yeah, it, it is just full. Yeah, no, they, 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 they really go out of the way to try and, like, not waste any space nowadays. But, yeah, look, so, so you could technically um, just part out sprues and... Get. So all Sigmar and now all Orc. So super easy to like split boxes. Okay, so building instructions, the uh, uh, the War Swirl cards, always handy. Looks like it's just... And then, all right, so this is legitimately the thing I'm most excited about. <laughs> oh, I love this book. It does look really, really, really fancy. I just, that art piece is so, so cool. Like, I just love how awesome they made uh, uh, the storm, like how cool she, like her whole body and the framing, it, the way, uh, uh, the way everything is set up in the picture, like her whole body just looks like a spring. Like it's just coiled, ready to snap. And like the sword clearly, like just kind of falling to the wayside so that she can really like crank on this spear and just whatever's down here that's about to get speared is not gonna have a good time. <laughs> yeah, considering lightning's already cutting it in half. Yeah, like it's, uh, it's just so cool. I love the books, they always do an amazing job and I love the like specialty books they've been doing recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 last but certainly not least, bases. Holy cow, this is that one. That's the bo or, uh, war orc war boss on the, the beast, yeah. <laughs> and did you see the great white beast got released today? Yes. Oh my god, yes. I'm very, yeah. No, it is a fantastic time to get into Age of Sigmar. Um, second edition has been absolutely wonderful, and it's been an amazing ride. And now, with, with third edition coming out, like, there's never been a better time to jump into it. So taking a look at the sprues, we noticed one thing. Uh, this seems to be the only sprue that's actually, so this half is Stormcast, this half is the Cruel Boys, and it, uh, it, if, um, let's see. Oh, there's one right here as well. So yeah, so, so there's two sprues so far, but this is all Stormcast, all Stormcast, all Stormcast. Definitely all now, Stormcast. The cool thing about this is look at how these things are packed. Mm -hmm. Because, yep, that's going to be an individual box. That's going to be an individual box, which oh, yeah. means that these are going to be thirty-five dollars each. More than likely, absolutely. So I think the total value of this box is about seven hundred, same as Indominus. They're about or a little bit more than Indominus. And we know one thing, thanks to Sterling talking to me earlier about this, is that this box is a thousand points each, mm -hmm. each army. Yeah, which is insane how quickly you can dive into this. And the level of detail on these 
absolutely incre incredible. I'm very, very excited. Actually, <clears throat> this woman, the... Uh, uh, she is a lot bigger than I thought she would be. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, originally, I thought she was only going to be, like, this big. Mm -hmm. and no, like, the fact that, like, her little plinth is already, like, almost two, two and a half, maybe even three inches tall... Like, Looks like two and a half. Yeah, like that's <laughs> just the, and then the wings alone are another in two inches easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, much larger model than I uh, uh, oh, yeah. previously thought. Something else that I I, I need to point out. Mm -hmm. When these were painted up and I saw them on the box, mm -hmm. they reminded me of just pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> they have their little pepperoni shields. Yep. Oh, wow. And look. Uh, uh, yeah, the Orc Warboss is not a small guy either, like... No, he's massive as well. Like, absolutely, yeah. Uh, 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 Age of Sigmar is... It's another... This is another box that I think really kind of exemplifies the point that, like, Age of Sigmar is 100% a painter's game. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really love painting as a hobby, and if you really, really love painting, and, and you're very interested in that aspect of the hobby, I highly recommend Age of Sigmar. The, 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 the models are incredibly detailed, they're absolutely fantastic, and just, you can do a lot with them to show that detail off, and really kind of, like, make your army your own army, um, and make it pop the way that you want to make it pop. I, I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of this box. I'm, also, been, the fact that you could just mix a whole bunch of armies together. Yes, 100%. It's just, it, it's such a good system, and I'm, I'm very excited to, 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 to bite into this book and, and really get through it and see, you know, what the new additions bring in. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be uh, the unwrapping. We already got it started here. Oh, I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. And I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I just might like it. Anyway. I think I do like it. Ah, oh, so cool. They're, yeah, they are really leaning into the, the, the Cruel Boys, the si uh, 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 Stormcast Eternals. All right, so let's see. Let's I also see. love that they look like classic, like, actual, like, demon <sighs> orcs instead of, like, yeah. The uh, orcs from 40k. Which... The, the Mordor orc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is phenomenal. So I think, like, if, if I'm... So a lot of their art pieces have, like, really cool details and just weird story elements hidden inside of them. And, like, you can even kind of see the cat. But, like, they really seem to be leaning into this this era of the beast and and dealing with the sort of aftermath of the, the Age of Chaos. Because... Uh, uh, Age of Sigmar so far has really, really been about the the aftermath of the end of the old world, the chaos, that chaos winning the final war, destroying the old world, and now in the Age of Sigmar, all the forces of order and all this other stuff just trying to deal with the fallout of all that. And this, <laughs> yeah, the airships up ahead. Well, it kind of has a um, oh, what is it? What is it? Red Alert Two feel to it. Kind of. It, it, so, I was thinking Iron Harvest. Yeah. 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 So, so, well, this, though, I love this because this is, like, one of the first pictures they've released of something that's called a, a um, it's like a, a crusade of some kind, but it's basically humans, stormcast, dwarves, and elves going out into the world to build cities. Oh, like, that's like the, cool. Oh, yeah, the reconquest. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's like a, a reconquest, because Sigmar basically was like, listen... Azir, you know, his dominion, his domain, it's getting kind of full. <laughs> it's a little packed. There's a lot of us. We need to go. And so now they're actually we're getting... Unfortunately, chaos and the forces of destruction are having the same ideas, it appears. Well, they should stop it. Uh, you know, I... Uh, okay, I gotta talk about this picture for a second. <laughs> like, these two orcs look like they're casually chatting about something. Yes. And this orc is like, oh, no, hell no, hold my earrings. <laughs> yeah. I really... I love that these two are clearly discussing, like, they're just being, it looks like they're being really judgy. And that like, one Hobgrot is just in the front, not knowing that they're talking about him. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> but, yeah. I also... Also, you can see their, their, uh... The, the pepperoni the shields. The shields. <laughs> the pepperoni shields. <laughs> yeah. I, another thing that I'm really loving about this, uh, 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 this edition so far is they're leaning way more into the lightning and thunder of the storm. Because that's always been sort of a, a guiding point of the Stormcast Eternals. They ride the lightning down, you know, and like it. But now it seems like they're really, really making that like more prevalent, not just in 
the uh, uh, the story, but in the game as well, because like Stormcast explode. Yes. This flat uh, out just said. Yep, I'm telling you, this st Age of Sigmar is the painter's game. Like if you really love painting high quality miniatures. Age of Sigmar is your game yeah, all day, that, every that day. That troll is from last year's White Dwarf where they did the tome for the troll army, and they showed you how to make him. He is a converted trog boss. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is cool as hell. Yep. Uh, oh, God, they even give you, like, painting and, and Why building Why isn't guides. this in the main rule book? Well, it oh, is now. It is now. <laughs> well, I mean, for 40K. For that's 40K, yeah, no. For, and that's the thing, I... I so How I, many times do you think they had to take this picture before they got all of them not to have a butt crack showing? <laughs> oh, I, that 100% is a photoshopped image. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They, they, yeah, no, they, see, they, if you, I can tell. Look at those pixels. They just had to cover yeah, up they the had crack. To, they stretched the khaki <laughs> up. <laughs> it's oh, all done in post. Beautiful. Yep. Okay, so nice, nice. That's actually great. So they do start. Okay, so the Age of Myth is the time immediately after the, 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 the end of the world that was. So they're giving you a history lesson in this book. So the Age of Myth, they talk about everything. The Pantheon of Order, where... Sigmar laying a smack down on the god beast. This, yep. this is literally somebody cracking their ultimate yes. hammer down. Yep. And, and so it's basically Sigmar building the Pantheon. And then, Gift of Civilization, what a beautiful thing. And oh no, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> so then... We thought we were being sneaky, we, but they found us. Yep. So now... Dang uh, the Dark God Enchained. I'm sure you know who that is. Slanesh. I mean, in all fairness, they want to be in chains. Valid, valid. And now, so so Age of Civilization, that was great. And then Chaos. So now Age of Chaos, it's been terrible. Uh, uh, the Doom Insidious. Um, the humbling of the God King. This is a really important part of the Age of Sigmar and the history therein, because this is what causes almost literally every other problem in the world. The dying of the light, the 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 the, the, the high elves falling to chaos. Yep. Wait, high elves can fall to chaos. High yes. elves fell to chaos originally. It's why uh, it's the lore reason why the Lumineth weren't released until recently because high elves have always been like a key part of like fantasy for Games Workshop. Mm -hmm. But they needed a reason for them to not have been around, and the reason was they started falling to Slanesh and had essentially the doom of the Eldar from 40k, mm -hmm. but in the fantasy world. So That's now they like, are finally strong enough to go out and actually adventure beyond their borders again. I do like that Age of Sigmar has direct correlations to 40k, like events and everything. Mm -hmm. Like the Beast of Rises is now mm -hmm. the War of the Beast. Yeah. In this, the Rise of the Beasts. There's a lot of like. It's one of those things I do love that they hit a lot of the same story beats. But yeah, and so now like this... Age of Chaos is right after the Emperor fell. Yep, yep, exactly. And that's very similar to what happened in this book. So like it's one of those things where I love the overlap because it really helps if you are interested in Age of Sigmar and you're not certain about 40k. If you like Age of Sigmar, I guarantee you will like 40k. And if you love 40k and you're not certain about Age of Sigmar you will love Age of Sigmar for the exact same reasons. The story it, elements are amazing. The Realm Gate Wars, like, I could talk about the Realm Gate Wars for like three hours easily, because it's just a really, that, really cool- That is not this video. <laughs> that is not this video, no. But the, uh, like, this is a book, is amazing. Like the history lesson that they're giving you. The, uh, uh, the Cities of Sigmar, like you're seeing, this is the beginning of, of Seeds of Hope, where, where normal men and women and elves and dwarves and just the mortals of the world are finally fighting back. Dark Omens is what's in the future, no, that's though. That's the malign portents mm, yeah. uh, part. So now we're getting to the Necroquake, which was the big story point for the second edition. The first edition was all about the Realmgate Wars. Mm -hmm. Second edition is all about the Necroquake and the Soul Wars, yep. where Nagash is literally going to war because Sigmar has been stealing the souls of the honorable dead to turn them into Stormcast. And, and I mean, yeah, I can understand that. Well, Nagash is, uh, you know, just a big old baby, and he doesn't like other people touching his things, so that's really what the I mean, the issue Skeletor is. really doesn't like people touching... But then, all right, so so that all happened. But then one of my favorite things happened. Yes. Yes, Morathi. <laughs> Kayla Morathi Kane being a thing. It was absolutely one of my favorite story elements of the entire past, like, Age of, Sig uh, Age of Sigmar really story releases. Like, it was so cool reading her story when she was, like, just a sorceress, like a priest. And then slowly just watching her play the game and beat other people and finally at the end just being like, you know what? 
only godhood is good enough for me and she actually did it like she took godhood <laughs> like i love her whole story marathi's a, a queen i i love marathi so much yeah and the lore in this main rule book does go all the way up to the end of the Broken Realms books. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't get a chance to snag the Broken Realms books, but you still want to know what happened, it's covered in the main rulebook now. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, uh, the, 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 <coughs> uh, the return of Teclis and, and the, the High Elves coming out of hiding and, and, you know, returning to war, always really cool. Bellacor coming back. Bellacor coming back. Abs oh, I love Bellacor. He's another one of my favorite characters. And what I love is they... Uh, they really, really like leaned into using Bellacor as like a big bad to give a really cool, I think, in lore reason to upgrade the Stormcast. Cause like the, uh, all these new Stormcast and, and the characters that we're gonna see, a lot of them are coming, uh, uh, are what are like basically upgraded Stormcast Eternals. They had to be upgraded cause Bellacor put a darkness over the world. And so literally a bunch of Stormcast Eternals who were on the mortal planes when they died, instead of returning to Azir to be reforged, they just died. They couldn't break through Bellicor's uh, miasma. Mm -hmm. So now they got upgraded, so when they die, they explode in a blast of lightning, and that gives them enough power to actually break that barrier now. And the Era of the Beast. Old Kragnos is back. Huh, he ain't got no junk. I mean, <laughs> maybe he's just being, you know, reserved. He was in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> the mortal realms and the reaping. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still stuck on Kragnos' junk. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so more of the mortal realms kind of yeah. shows you how everything's laid out, the magic system, how the different realm spheres work, all this good stuff. Oh, buddy, they actually show you a really cool map. So yeah. this is actually the realm of fire. Yeah, that's a, it's important to note that Age of Sigmar's cosmology is more based off of what we thought the solar system was like in like the 1300s mm -hmm. where we had like our millery spears where we thought everything circled around each other and over and under in all these strange bizarre orbits and that's what all these different realms are they circle around each other mm -hmm. in this never ending dance but these realms are just what's left over from the world that was yep. they are just the winds of magic from old editions that coalesced together and formed like solid matter so that's why you see just like the ends of these worlds just drop off mm -hmm. because that's where Flat it, earthers are right well they are in age of sigmar they are in uh, age of sigmar there is, there is a that. there's a fun there's a funny joke in one of the age of sigmar books about like someone believing that the uh, the realms are round and everyone just kind of boos him yeah. <laughs> this is earth boo boo, boo. <laughs> Uh, champ the realm of metal, which is just so cool. Yeah, and this is part of what you can use in Age of Sigmar to like theme your army, is what realm is it from? Yeah. That changes like what colors you're going to use. Yep. How did they grow up? Because there's still people who live on all these realms. Yep. Like, humans this is Shaiish, this is the realm of the dead, this is where Nagash lives, and they're still human cities. Yeah. And that's where you see things like the recent Curse City box, where mm -hmm. like it's like, no, these people grow up hunting vampires. Why? Because they live in the realm of death. Yeah. There's vampires everywhere. Unfortunately. Damn it! It's Vampire Tuesday already. <laughs> yep. It's in. It's an infestation. You you oh, you pour out some of your cereal. Boom! Vampires. Go to the fridge. Vampires. Get in your car. Vampires. It's a problem. Uh, ooh, the realm of shadow. Ooh, Look ooh. in the mirror. Don't see the vampire behind <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, yep. See. Uh, uh, look in the mirror, don't see a reflection, boom, too late, you're already a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, uh, that's actually a great point, and I'd love to bring that up. If you want to play Stormcast Eternals, right? Boom. So you're playing Stormcast Eternals. You don't want to paint gold, though. I don't blame you. Gold's kind of a hard color to paint, depending. So you say, fine, I want to make my Stormcast company from Olgu, the Realm of Shadow. And so now your Stormcast can be, like, all black and red and blue and like just darker, darker colors because they're from this environment. Okay. Same here. Heesh, the realm of light. Like, I could make. A you do want to do platinum armored orcs. Yeah, like you could make. Because that's another platinum cool thing. Platinum armored orcs. Yes, because orcs, this is the realm of light, but all like, the destruction and chaos factions and, and, and everything else. 
still show up here every now and again. And so, like, you just could... get a little bit lonely? Exactly. <laughs> but you could have a bunch of iron jaws from Heesh, the Realm of Light, and that means, like, your orcs, like, your iron jaws, you could have them, like, platinum armor, and, like, their skin could, you know... Uh, uh, you you could have bit... white light flowing out of all your Slanesh cultist eyes exactly. because they're from Heesh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it's just such a cool, cool, cool I uh, yeah, uh, all uh, the idea. Details. Yeah. And, and Azir, the realm of heaven, so this is where Sigmar resides uh, with uh, a yeah, uh, majority of the Stormcast. Where Sigmar slammed the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Realm of chaos. What's in the realm of chaos? Well, it, it's funny you should ask. What it's chaos. It? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, literally everything is in the realm of chaos. It's all terrible. You can look into it a lot more, but it, it's always, always mm -hmm. bad. There's, basically. there's one location in the realm of chaos which is important for the story. Mm -hmm. It is the Varen Spire. It is where uh, Warcry Catacombs and Warcry the game are set. Yep. And the blood uh, wastes outside of the Varen Spire. Yep. It's where Archeon lives when he's not out conquering, which is all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all, it's your boy is never home. <laughs> Ever. This is vacation home. It literally. Pretty much is. It's, uh, it's a vacation home for a workaholic. But that yeah. is the Varen Spire is in the uh, the eight points, which is kind of like the center of travel through all these different realm gates. Mm -hmm. Now we heard a bunch of lore. What's different about third edition? Um, we are going to have to jump forward slightly to the rules. Uh, the rules for this edition. So. If you are watching this, uh, then that means that it is already out as a PDF mm -hmm. on Warhammer Community. You can pull up the 44 actual pages of rules as a PDF provided by Games Workshop. So Games Workshop learning from a lot of other super successful game companies in the business and what? just releasing all their rules for free. Mm -hmm. uh, except for the codex. Except for the codexes, but that, you know, we're going to take what we can get. Um, I, <laughs> we have battle scribed. Yeah. I really love it. Take up thy blade once more. Uh, but yeah, so the, the big changes. Um, now, things like command points, they are generated during the, the start of a battle round. And this edition has a lot of timing definitions. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's always been sort of issues of like, okay, well, I have a thing that happens when I roll sixes to hit. Okay, well, I cast this spell, I now have a second thing where I have things that happen when I roll sixes to hit. All of that has been simplified and boiled down and put in just plain old black and white. Um, the player's code, like this is pretty much how like the R&D teams at GWHQ like function. <laughs> so it's nice seeing like a little guiding hand of like, hey, here's how you should probably like conduct yourself with each other. I wonder if don't be a jerk is on there. Yeah, literally at the uh, very stop. Always be polite and respectful. Ah, don't yep. be a jerk. Don't be yeah. a jerk. <laughs> Always tell the truth and never cheat. Mm-hmm. No, I'm actually, I, I wasn't, uh, I'd only heard a rumor about this being in this book, but I'm actually super, super happy it is, because, like, uh, I already, just glancing at this, already see a yeah. bunch of things that, like, people ask. So, like, ask your opponent's permission if you wish to use unpainted models or substitute models. That's literally all you have to do. For most people in Age of Sigmar, we are uh, uh, hobbyists, yes, but a lot of us also have very busy lives. If you want to play with unpainted or even half-finished models, that's totally fine for most like people. I feel like that's a shot at me. No, it, it, <laughs> that's 100% in Age of Sigmar, just kind of a thing that I love that they're actually making. Like, hey, that's totally cool. We just want people to play this game, and we want people to have a good time. Yeah. So I love that. The, the player's code just being right at the front is phenomenal. Yes, agreed. Okay, so the actual core rules. Uh, everything that you have to know about just basic concepts of the game, they're all right here. Everything from, like, but how does a faction work? How, what's a battle tome? What's a battle pack? Everything mm -hmm. is just laid out nice and simple. What counts as a model? Mm -hmm. See, this they need to do in 40K, because cherubims yes. are models and don't count as a model on the table. Yeah, sure. and yeah. there's no, a that's... lovely little section that actually just says, like, yep. hey, here's what actually counts as a model for game purposes. Mm -hmm. Here's here's unit coherency, which is a change. They have changed one major thing. Um, normally, you get one inch coherency, unlike in uh, 40k where it's two. So you have one inch coherency for all your units, but if your unit has more than five models in it, you must be within coherency of two other models in your unit. So it's kind of like a 40k's, but they dealt it down to one inch. Yes. yes. Um, 
The big thing that has also changed is that now coherency, if you lose coherency in Age of Sigmar, it's not like in 40k or something like that where, or in older editions, where you can move into coherency later. No, no, no. If you break coherency, you have to remove models until coherency is reattained. Alrighty. So, so, so positioning has become even more important in a game that was already very, very reliant on positioning being used like to strategy. I feel like AOS is going to use a lot of like movement trays. It's definitely a lot of people are thinking about it. The apocalypse uh, movement templates are something that a lot of folks I know do use in Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty important. Uh, tools of War. I love what it. Is, what is the D6? Yeah. How do you roll dice? <laughs> exactly. No, that's actually one of the huge things about this uh, that I really love. We are war gamers, so we know how to read dice shorthand. We know how to kind of suss this out, and that's all fine. A lot of people are new to this hobby, and so they don't have that information just kind of baked into their heads, you know, th for, through years of sort of osmosis. Yeah, just like rolling a D3? Exactly. Like, like some people, if you said roll a D3, they would have no idea, and that's not a problem. Something that still trips me up in 40K, roll a D33. Mm. The hell is a D33? Yep. Oh, it's a D3 followed by another D3. Yep. And it's like, are, are you serious? One's a tens and one's a, a one's place. And yeah, so then... Showing you how to, uh, uh, talking about the battle. So this is not how to set up or any of that. This is literally just how you're going, uh, uh, talking about the battlefield, what you can expect. Battle round. Uh, so, so. But not the battlefield? Well, no, we're not we talking about how the size changed? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the size the did change. The size now changed. It is mm -hmm. down to the same method as 40K, where the minimum size is multiples of the war cry slash kill team boards. Which is, you can see, right there. Yeah. That's my finger. <laughs> if it'll load in, there we go, yeah. And those are actually stupid useful because uh, I played two, uh, two 1,000 point games at home mm -hmm. on a six by three table that I just folded up in my house. Yeah. Like, I literally took out a table, unfolded it, and played a game in my house it, without taking up too much room. And yeah. I live in a studio yeah. apartment, so yep. that's actually big that yeah, I can play games. Minimum size tables have been a great change. I know Agreed. a lot of people were still like very upset because they're like, but my six by four mats, it's like, cool. Now you have a little area on the back edge to just put all your like yeah. ovens like on. I have yeah. like a, yeah, like I, what's like I can keep my dice over here, yeah. my war scroll cars over here. Exactly. I have so much space for activities. Yep. <laughs> so much space for activities. <laughs> we got to build bunk beds after this. All right. Man. Um, <laughs> Battle Maybe. rounds being a, 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 what's it? So just, I love that they... Can you still do double turns? Yes, yes. you can. So uh, so no longer do you have to worry about deployment as much in Age of Sigmar, because the benefit for dropping your whole army before your opponent is just, hey, if you guys tie on the priority roll, you go first if you had fewer drops. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. no longer how it used to be where it's like, hey, I take all of my guys in one big super battalion, I drop them all at one time, I go first. It's like, no, no, that's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, battle rounds now also start with both players earning command points. Yes. So if you get double turned, so you lose the initiative roll on turn three and you didn't have it before, you get extra command points mm -hmm. from then on. So there's ways that they have balanced everything down. Um, also, command points don't work in Age of Sigmar the way they do in 40K. You don't start with 12 and work your way down. You start with zero. And work your way but up. <laughs> each battle round, you gain a set amount based off the size mm -hmm. of your game and any abilities you have. And that's the fun part because those points go away at the end of the battle round. Oh. So every battle round, we're gaining just like two to three to four command points, and you can spend your command points to do abilities now on your opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide, it's like, do I really need that reroll charges on my turn, when on their turn I may need plus one to my save? So yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a fun but very profound change. Yes, um, the and hero phase being added new heroic actions. Yep, so generic uh, abilities all heroes can use. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, heroic recovery, I like that. Yeah, yeah there's, there's healing ones. They've even added just generic, essentially, warlord traits to the game, which run off of those heroic actions. So things like re-roll your dice to see how many you heal if you do heroic recovery. Mm -hmm. um, 
heroic leadership. It's like, yeah, I just want you to like re-roll your battle shock test, you know? Yeah. Things like that. So. Yeah. Uh, movement phase has stayed uh, uh, much the same. There, are, there are some uh, uh, key differences. Yeah, things have um, been clarified. The inclusion of, of uh, uh, additional uh, uh, command abilities also totally uh, uh, helps us out. Uh, one important note for everyone who's been playing vampires: normal move has been clarified. Normal move is a normal move, so retreating is not a normal move. Nope. You know, this actually came up in a 40k game yesterday. Yeah. Uh, the Dark Eldar have something, or the Drukari have something for a normal move out of, yeah. and they mm -hmm. were like, can I get them out of combat? And I was like, no, that's not a normal move, that's a retreating action. Yeah, mm -hmm. vam vampire players, uh, or I'm sorry, soul blight grave lords, as they're now called, uh, have vampires. been wanting to know what the deal was with the, uh, the blood dragon's ability to make a normal move and deal damage to people. Well, now it's clarified, hey, this is just... Like, retreat is a different thing. You don't get to do it this way. Mm -hmm. They move in a radius in AOS. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you yes. fly. If, yes. if you fly, you now measure diagonally. Yep. So you don't do the stupid 40k, just move infinitely over and then yep. fall? No. Nope. There, there is no pick up, fly 12 inches forward, and then fall 16 feet back to the ground. There's none of that. Um, yeah. It is now you measure diagonally from the base to where the base is going to end up, which and is... Well, it's a good change. Yeah, I also believe, I don't know for certain, but I believe they also made a, a distinction and clarified, you have to land on something. Yes, you, you cannot have, end in the sky. Yeah, you have to <laughs> choose your starting point, which is, and then your f end point, you have to have a, I land here. You yeah. can't say, I land in the air and then drop. It, it is it, very similar to how jumping works in Infinity now, where nice. you have to like measure from the base to where you want it to land. Yep. Um, um, shooting. Shooting phase, combat phase, a lot of this, I imagine... Not much has changed beyond the you can only stack uh, one modifier up. Mm -hmm. So, similar to how in 40k, your plus and minus can only at max hit one. Same thing happens in uh, Age of Sigmar now. Yep. So no uh, more minus twos to hit. No more minus twos. Big thing is no more plus twos to hit, because mm -hmm. there were a few factions who could pull that. Um, also, you cannot fight three times in a turn in Age of Sigmar anymore. Yay. If you have an ability that says you could fight a third time, no, the game stops it. Yep, it just no more. <laughs> yep. Um, Judge comes out, bonks The actual the attacking, attack sequence, explaining all that. <laughs> it, important note, uh, eagle-eyed observers will notice that there are these lovely like pink mauve boxes in each phase. Command Those abilities. are your new command abilities for each individual phase. Mm-hmm. So they are, they are all collated in one place. So as you're learning to play this new edition, Flipping through and reading the rules will then show you. It's like, oh, we're in this phase. I have these command abilities. Yep. All right. So wounds. Wounds. I believe. have to take wounds. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm 90% certain. Oh, wards. So wards, I think, are going to be much, much bigger deal this, uh, this edition. Yeah. Ward saves are now the official terminology for any save you get to take after you fail your armor save. So mm -hmm. what... Communally, we call shrugs or feel yep. no pains. Yep. They're now just called wards, which caused a little bit of confusion when wards were first previewed. Yeah, because ward phases use ward saves used to be invulnerable saves, mm -hmm. but now it is just a save after the fact. Yep. Okay. Any so feel no pain. Yep. It's yeah. A, yeah. It's a a ward is just a shrug. It's a now. it's a it's a feel no pain by any other name. Mm -hmm. uh, battle shock phase. So, so in Age of Sigmar, Battleshock has always been actually a very, very like dangerous thing. It's one of those things where failing a Battleshock test in Age of Sigmar hurts almost always, way, 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 way more than it hurts in 40k, at least for me. Um, your models just leaving in Age of Sigmar, real spooky, real dangerous, you never ever want it to happen. Battleshock simply removes models. It doesn't matter how many wounds your characters have or oh, anything. Oh, so if it yeah. hits like trolls or something. Oh yeah, yeah. my four wound trolls all have bravery five. Yes. So ah. d6 plus their wounds, I or d6 plus number of models that have been killed, mm -hmm. I, I could easily lose a unit on a bad roll. Yeah. That's terrible. Um, yeah, no, it makes, so, so, but it makes uh, uh, certain armies incredibly viable still. Where, where you think they probably wouldn't be. Uh, my ogres have four wounds apiece. Uh, uh, goblins have one wound apiece, and they don't, they're not bringing a lot of damage or oomph, but goblins have a lot of ways to affect the battle shock phase. So my ogres, 
could literally just kind of get scared. And in, now instead of having all these like uh, uh, big stompy guys, I have big stompy guys who are afraid of all these little dudes and they just leave. That's actually yeah. kind of funny. <laughs> they, they have brought Inspiring Presence back in as a command ability, only usable during the Battle Shock phase, but you have to use it before you roll any dice. Yep. So you can still be like, hey, this unit that took 20 casualties, they're not taking Battle Shock. Yep. But you have to decide that before you roll anything. And then one of the new things is defensible terrain, right? Well, it's terrain, terrain overall in general just has got made a huge a... redo, yeah. Yeah, um, there's, there's been a lot of clarifications because there's faction terrain, there's the war cry terrain, there's summonable terrain in the form of endless spells. So they have just cleaned everything up, mm -hmm. put it all into one book so that you can easily see, hey, this is what like holy, ter holy on terrain means. Holy moly. This holy is moly. what behind terrain means, which is actually, I actually a big deal. I actually like this. Behind terrain is super big because like, uh, for instance, in 40k, if you get behind the uh, Mechanicum terrain, mm -hmm. it doesn't clarify vehicle or not. So yep. technically, vehicles can get cover from it. Mm -hmm. yep. But not if they're touching it, only if it's passing over it. Yeah, now there's, there's a lot. Yeah. Now a behind lot terrain in Age of Sigmar is a simple clarification of, hey, you have to be behind it within three inches, and your opponent must be more than one inch away from the other side of it. Mm-hmm. So All right, that's super easy. It's, yeah. it's very straightforward. I love it. Um, garrisoning, so that's pretty much in uh, Age of Sigmar, you can garrison certain buildings. Uh, castle walls. Yeah, castle and, walls, and towers. Demolish. Yeah, yep. demolish, because you can destroy terrain. Yeah. And that is just an ability that every monster has access to with the new monstrous abilities. Oh, yeah. Can, um, uh, what, what, is, what is the big dude? Kragnos. Kragnos is yeah, Kragnos can Yeah, Kragnos can yell and destroy a piece of defensible terrain. Mm -hmm. So he loves running around and doing that and breaking that stuff down. But because he he is a monster as well as a hero, he can do multiple things in a turn. So Kragnos can rip down two buildings, one with the command ability and one with his static ability. Yep. And then they explain what objectives are. Yep, yep. objectives, it's, how it's to control. Pin, yep, it's a pinpoint, you measure from the center. Yep. Good. So it's always sick, it's always a 12 inch circle in Age of Sigmar. Mm-hmm. And then wizards. wizards! Put on your wizard hat. It's about to get real. Now everyone, grab your robe and wizard hat. Things have changed. Everyone. It's scary and terrifying. But You're honestly, a wizard, Harry. everything's mm -hmm. been simplified. Mm -hmm. uh, so Arcane Bolt it is essentially Smite in Age of Sigmar, except for now, you charge it up like, imagine that you are Goku, <laughs> and you want to Kamehameha somebody. Oh my god, I love this. So you, you roll to see if the spell goes off during your hero phase, and then you hold on to it until you choose to use it. You can use it in any other phase during the turn, and depending how close you are to your target, you'll do extra damage. So far. So if you are within 12 inches, you can deal a mortal wound. Mm -hmm. But if you're within three, is which is a... combat range, you can deal D3 mortal wounds. It's basically- Is be... Goku a wizard? The, 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 the Goku, uh, Goku is like... technically like a monk of the Shining Fist or the like the solar fist or something like that. I used to have a stat sheet for Goku. He, he, no, 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 a, I mean the AOS version. Oh, the, the AOS version of Goku? The um, Sun Goku, the Monkey King guy. Oh, mm -hmm. uh... Mm -hmm. No, not really. Okay. But yeah, then uh, uh, endless spells are also clean up. I actually really like that they, there are units of wizards in this game. Um, Units of wizards. Yes, just a bunch of wizards hanging out together and doing uh, uh, cool spells. But uh, 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 what I love is that in Age of Sigmar, they don't relegate casting strictly to to mysticism and, and magic. Cause, so so they have predatory endless spell, all the stuff. But they also have priests, priests uh, who who have prayers, invocations, all these different ways to kind of interact with magic in the world that isn't tied to like wizards and things like that. Um, it is the Age of Sigmar because it is very much a, a sort of like spiritual type of game. So I love all of that. Monsters and all their new rules. Uh, uh, I play a very, Titanic very- Titanic duel. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, yes. I play a very monster heavy list, so I'm super excited about doing this type of stuff. Yeah. Let's just get back to recording. Indeed. Okay, all right. So these uh, uh, are just going to be war, war scroll, uh, uh, how to read a war scroll. So remember, we were talking about how they're putting things in this book that really just teach new players how to get in, into it. 
War Scroll cards, fantastic. This is just telling you how to read that. Um, same on, on, uh, uh, on and on. Yeah. Faction terrain War Scrolls, uh, uh, almost every faction in Age of Sigmar has a specialty piece of terrain that you can bring in your army for free. Um, this is showing you how to set them up and how to, to kind of play with those. Endless spells. Magic in Age of Sigmar is so powerful that a lot of the spells that we have, we have actual models for. Yep, yep. like uh, Sniper Viper. Exactly. Yeah, the Sniper Viper. The Sniper or, Viper, 100%. Or the Angry Teeth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and because of that... The Mushroom on Acid. Exactly. Because of that, this is, is the rules and also, again, just telling you how to read that War Scroll card. Um, pitch battle profiles. So, so, so this is where you're going to start getting into... Um, point value, battlefield rule. This is kind of like matched play, so to speak. Um, mm. in, in, in like a little bit different. A little bit different. It's, this is pretty much, when they're talking about pitch battle profiles, that is the back sheet in every 40K codex, where it's like, here's the name of the unit, mm -hmm. here's how many points it costs. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's all it means when we say pitch battle profiles. And actually, use pitch battle profiles in every mode of game now. Oh, nice. So everything uses points. There yep. is no weird secondary power value thing Can in Age of Sigmar. Can please get rid of that in 40K? All uh, right, listen, they, mean, 40K is a whole different animal. They are, um, they're grown uh, men and women, and they will never listen to us. Ever. <laughs> I know. Um, but then we get into battalions. Battalions. Which I'm excited about because this is... This is 100% going to start to determine how people... So, so if you'll notice... As a warlord, you have one leader. Uh, it tells you all, this is your cheat sheet down here. So what you need to bring. And then when you take battalions, these down here are the extra little things that you get. In, so, in, in Age of Sigmar, it used to be that when you grabbed a battalion, you could deploy the whole thing in one go. And that was your main incentive to bring in a battalion. In third edition, They've done away with faction-specific battalions in their matched play rules, so in tournament rules, they're gone. Uh, and everyone gets these generic ones with mm -hmm. their generic abilities. Yep. So yeah. I, which I personally love. It really kind of so. So for example, line breaker here, two monsters, and a commander, and I'm a potentially that's third an option. Yeah. Yep. Okay. A potential yep. third one. So this is what a lot of like big monsters. So the beast claw raiders. Gonna take line breaker. It gives them that, which is expert. expert. Once per battle, one unit from this battalion can receive the all-out attack or all-out defense command without the command being issued and without a command point being spent. So Ooh. plus one to hit on your attacks or plus one on your armor saves once per game. Which on monsters, a lot of the monsters in this game have three up armor saves. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay. so having it for free is real handy. Real handy. So here's a power move. If GW, instead of updating uh, Horus Heresy to 8th edition, <laughs> if they updated it to these rules. <laughs> I think I'd, I'd play it. <laughs> it's still the line of 7th edition. Play. Yeah. Immediately. Yep. Um, your allegiance abilities, these are abilities you get for playing specific factions and, and staying true to that specific allegiance. Yeah, so um, soup isn't a big thing in Age of Sigmar. You can technically do it, mm -hmm. but then your allegiance ability is the generic allegiance ability for being a soup faction. So and they're never it's lowest as, common denominator. Yeah, they're never as good as like the, 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 holy, specific, the specific faction abilities. But they're still playable. So yeah. if you want to play a game where, hey, I just just want to run like I want to run orcs. I want to run orcs with trolls, with goblins, with ogres, and I want to run that as my army. I want Kragnos, the destruction god. Cool. They all have the destruction keyword in common, so your allegiance and all your abilities are based off of the destruction keyword. Yep. And that's all this section does. And the fact that everything has been so exhaustively enumerated with 27.0, 27.1, 27.2.1. Yep. Like, this is gonna make rules referencing and like discussions about, hey, how That's do we That's a violation play this? of rule number 27.1.3.4. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, if you, if you do not have a cherub next to you floating around with this rule book open and you cannot quote the rule straight at somebody, then don't stress it. Yeah. Roll a d6 and decide who's right. Yeah. Check and, the rule and, later. And yeah, you can check the rule later, or just because of how it is enumerated, how it is so exhaustively enumerated, as you said. Um, 
Yeah, you can literally check where. Uh, uh, what do we need to know? Oh, we need to know about allegiance abilities. That's rules. Uh, 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 start 27 and then we just go through there and if we still can't find an answer yeah roll a d6 and keep it rolling yeah. hey judge i have a question on sub factions uh, in section 27.1 of the rule book it says this don't you talk about my <laughs> <laughs> my sub factions uh yeah and then uh universal enhancements Be so right. enhancements are warlord traits and relics and abilities that everyone has access to. And again, all of this is available for free, right? Yeah, all of this came out this morning uh, for free on the Warhammer community page as part of a 44-page PDF. Yep. Um, Very nice. Go ahead. So the rest of this is available online for free. Yep, yep, yep. So let's absolutely. see some of the other cool stuff that this book offers. So another thing that I love that they did, the studio collections. Like, So this is Ben Johnson, Sons of Behemoth. I love when they do the like army on parade thing. And I hate that there's a glare on everything. Yeah. But look at that. Like it, it, they just do gorgeous armies. Yeah, and they do all sorts of fun conversions, and they just love showing them off. Like the, those giants are converted to two-handed weapons. Mm-hmm. Looks so cool. Yeah, and, and then open play. There is something in open play I want to point out. So open play is kind of size is difference. It's kind of been misnomered for a while as like, oh, you can just take whatever you want in open play and it's legal. Open play may in this new edition supplant match play as the pickup version of the game. Mm. Because as you go and you start getting ready to build your table and everything, similar to how in Warcry, you draw cards to figure out the missions and the objectives. In mm. this, you roll a D6 to get one of these crazy like setup areas and then you'll roll another d6 to build the mission yep oh that's cool and yep. then there's even like a twist and whatnot which i believe is on the next page yeah there's a whole chart just for twists okay so this is like the uh the maelstrom missions yeah. kind of yeah yeah very much so where you just deal cards yeah oh i'm so excited <laughs> Oh, Have you yeah. ever just been so jealous of the way someone else built it? Seriously, I've never been more... I'm trying to get rid of that glare that's on the screen so you can see Nagash, but he is just in a glare. Yeah, he's just gorgeous is what he is. It's that's ridiculous. Super nice. Also, look at the Archeon conversion over here. Like, so you just put like a vampire yeah, he's lord He's out of nowhere. Up. It's so ridiculous. Yep, yeah, and see so he's just chilling out on his throne? Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that uh, this, I feel like, really, really exemplifies what I was talking about earlier. I love Warhammer 40k. Warhammer 40k is absolutely one of my favorite games of all time. This type of model w will not exist in 40k. Yeah, I'm really like hoping this, the rumors are true that they're going to bring back Demon Primarchs. We'll they're going to bring back we'll crazier see. stuff. But like this, like this type of model would be very, very cool in 40k. But it just this is just a head swap. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like this type of stuff just uh, 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 isn't as common, and I just, I love the huge kind of uh, uh, yeah. fantastical feel of the narrative play. So, Path to Glory is a really, really, really cool narrative setting for Age of Sigmar. It's very similar to 40K's Crusade in that you build an army, and then as you play games and as you kind of develop that, they will gain story points and artifacts and, and upgrades and scars and, and trophies and, and, you know. And death. And yeah. heirlooms and death and all this really cool stuff, so. Yeah, which is a much better update than it used to be because Path to Glory used to be the same way it was in 6th edition 40K. Yeah. Uh. Where it was a, here's a chart. Did you win? Okay, you get to roll on this chart to see which unit you have to buy next and add into your army. So that is gone. It has been wrapped into Path to Glory as part of narrative play. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are just tuning in to check out the new edition stuff, narrative play just means, hey, we're telling a story here. Yep. So there's all the different like battles and things that you hear about in the lore, and narrative play is the way that you will set up those games to recreate those like pivotal moments mm -hmm. in Age of Sigmar history. Yep. And then there's all the different quests. These are all the different quests you can embark on. Fighting Path to Glory battle. All the rules and, and sort of how everything works out. I love this picture of the Caradron Overlord Iron Man. Yeah, he's just getting in his suit. Like, it's literally just a dwarf, a Caradron dwarf, walking up to his Enviro suit to, like, suit up for battle. And it is so ridiculous. That is really, really, <laughs> really cool. Like... 
And, and you know, the, again, I just, the world that they've created with Age of Sigmar, I'm just enamored with. It's such an interesting world. The, the, the players and the pieces and kind of how everything has started to unfold, they, 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 they've been absolutely killing it. Just, 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 just uh, uh, knocking it out of the ballpark in every single way. I think. Um, By the way, this is a box review. Yes. This is in the box. This gets reviewed at the same time. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then match play. So this is where a lot of people uh, uh, we're going to be running events and doing things with uh, uh, match play and tournaments and things like that. This I think is going to be sort of where everyone's uh, uh, bread and butter information kind of comes from. Yeah. A, a lot of this got. Spoiled Ooh. ahead of time with the reinforcement points and essentially just little changes and tweaks to how you play your game. So in 40k, you choose your secondary objectives at the start of the game. In Age of Sigmar, you choose at the start of each battle round what your secondary objectives will be. And there's only like six of them to choose from, so there won't be a huge issue with analysis paralysis. Uh, we are still expecting a General's Handbook in 2021 that will have all the updated unit sizes and points costs for everything, plus all the extra missions, because right now there's only three missions in the core book for match play. Alrighty. Uh, yeah. So that looks like we covered the entirety of the book as yeah. well. Oh, there's rules for fighting in tunnels. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah, you just flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh yeah, look at that tunnel fighting. Yeah, rules for tunnel fighting, rules for siege battles. Like, it's a very comprehensive rule set. I only think it's going to get better with time as we start seeing stuff added. Alrighty, so the next thing is what am I going to do with the contents of this box? Oh, I know. You can have this. Nice, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> This is more than likely going to somebody else, and, and I think they are in the corner, just kind of jamming out. <laughs> it's one whole weird family around here. Yeah, we are a crazy bunch, aren't we? Something like that. Here at Games U in Gilbert, Arizona. Come check us out. <laughs> shameless Back. plug is same. shameless. Speaking of shameless plugs, Hey everyone, make sure you check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Norn Queen Alexis. Every little bit helps support the channel and you can see this guy some more who's giggling like a mad person. Hello. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I want to thank both of the people here. You guys are awesome. I'm Norn Queen Alexis. Love you guys. Bye.